three Stuart steam plants mounting the boilers. Part 12. Parts on the bench from my friends at Blackgates Engineering. The brass tubes are for water tanks and condensers. The brass plates and copper plates are for the top and bottom parts of the tanks. And the steel is for the boiler heat sink mountings. This episode covers mounting a boiler on one of the heat sink plates. All the other things you can see have been put in a safe place. I have to make three mounting plates for three boilers, and this is going to take a while. To prevent any viewers from inadvertently slipping into a coma, I'm only going to show making one of the boiler mountings. Before I do that though, I'd like to show you some other things. This is going to be the general layout of the condensers for the three plants. First of all, the three brass tubes will need machining to the correct size. And what I have in my hand are the tops for the condensers. I thought for a change I would make them from copper to match the boiler tops. After removing the last of the brass tubing, I can now show you the boiler mounting plates. This rusty one is for the 504 boiler. It's not a problem, I will clean it off before I paint it. Obviously, the other two smaller plates are for the 501 boilers. The job begins by checking that they are all the right size, and indeed they are. Before I start though, there are a couple of things I would like to mention. Why don't I just screw the boilers down onto the wooden baseboards with four screws, one in each corner? That would be a very foolish thing to do, although in the past I have done this, and that's why I don't do it this way. The boilers need to be mounted on a piece of steel, which not only holds the boilers in position, it acts as a heat sink to dissipate the immense heat generated inside the casing, which obviously would be transmitted to the mountings. That's why I use a metal plate. And talking about metal plates, this is of vital importance. These have been freshly guillotined at Blackgates Engineering and the process causes one side of the plate to become very sharp, razor sharp in fact, so the first thing to do is to make them safe to handle. It's a very simple job. I'm currently working in my smaller workshop which is built onto the house, and I only have a one inch belt sander in this workshop. Normally in the main workshop I would use a four inch belt sander which makes the job much quicker. Whichever way you do it though, remove the sharp edges before working with the pieces of metal. What I'm doing here is using some 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper to clean up the surfaces of the metal. When I take the parts up to the main workshop for painting, I will scratch the surface of these pieces of metal using my 4 inch belt sander, and this will provide a much better key for the etching primer that I'll be using to paint them initially. The plates were slightly greasy, and the wet or dry sandpaper did at least remove that. The four nuts that you can see in this image are going to go underneath the base plate to elevate it from the baseboard itself. This will allow the atmosphere to contact both sides of the plate and improve its cooling qualities. In this image you can see it's going to be elevated from the bench just to prevent the hot mounting plate from burning the wooden base. Now I need to drill four holes very accurately in each corner of the mounting plates. So I'm using a Sharpie felt tip pen, which is a really good substitute for marking out blue, because it dries a lot quicker. And in no time at all, I can get on with the job. I've very carefully placed the first of the 501 boilers in position on the first of the base plates. Then I use the right angled end of my scriber to mark the position where the boiler needs to be. A warning though, this job can go very badly wrong if you don't mark the positions right. The next part of the job is to drill four holes accurately in the correct position between the marked lines, but not right up in the corner. The feet of 500 series boilers do not have drilled holes, they have slots, and it's really important not to get too close to where the slot ends, because the cast iron at this point is not flat. Drill halfway between the curved part of the line you've marked and the edge of the plate. Always start with the centre drill to create a pilot hole for the main drill. Accuracy in this job is vital. I'm currently drilling 1 8 of an inch diameter holes exactly in the area which was centre drilled. 
I don't need to go up into the main workshop to do this. My small Proxon bench drill is really good. It takes a little bit more time with this because it's quite light duty, but in the end I got a really good finish and the job is accurate. Once I'd finished drilling and deburring all of the holes, I applied a small amount of lubricating oil, because now I'm going to thread the hole 4BA. This is a high-speed steel 4BA tap, and the difference between the way it cuts and the way a carbon steel tap cuts is quite noticeable. Once I'd finished drilling all of the holes, I used a large twist drill to deburr the area, and then some cellulose thinners to remove the marks left by the Sharpie pen. Once I threaded all the holes, it was a simple job to just screw in some 4BA bolts. And now it's top tip time. I've lost my socket screwdriver. I think it's in the garage where I was working on the Land Rover. So here's a quick tip. You can use a screwdriver to fit in the end of the socket. It's not as good, but it does the job. And here you can see the importance of making sure these holes are drilled in the right place. If they're too close to the boiler, have a quick look at the casting. It curves at that point, and that would be no good at all. These are precisely in the right place. Exactly midway between the end of the slot and the edge of the plate. Here's the job so far. I've put some washers in place and loosely fitted some nuts. So I'm quite pleased with this. When I remove the nuts and washers, you can see just how precise the holes in the plate have to be. Mark out twice, drill once, and it should be okay. Take your time with it. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.